Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we're discussing a contemporary book. My first Sarah Dessen novel. The Truth About Forever. This was the highest rated Sarah Dessen on Goodreads. And you know, it was enjoyable. But more overwhelmingly, it was frustrating for me. I kind of started to remember why I don't read that much contemporary. It's usually one book. Usually there's a love line running through it. The relationship doesn't really come to fruition until the last five pages or so. I feel like there's no payoff. It's just over. I would give this book maybe a 75 in my book. I really hated the main character. I didn't hate her. Okay, I didn't hate her. I was really frustrated with her. All her problems could have been solved so easily just by speaking. If you haven't read this book, I'm going to tell you to leave now because I don't want to spoil you on anything. She just had to talk to her and mom. There were so many easy things. She could have just explained like this. She could have stood up for herself. She could have said anything, but she didn't. It made me so mad. And I loved all her interactions with Wes and I loved their question game. Most of the characters were really well developed. All the catering folk felt like really real characters. Macy was just kind of so wishy-washy for she me. She never stood up for herself, even when she was supposedly had developed into someone who was going to stand up for herself. She was gonna say something. She didn't say anything. At the end, Caroline is one of my favorite characters, her sister. She speaks up for Macy and tells her mom off because her mom is just being horrible. Caroline's like, she's finally happy. She's made friends. Those friends are changing her for the better. Her mom denies that Macy is feeling all the things that Caroline expresses. And Macy just sits there. This is after almost the entire book. This is the client. I'm sitting there crying because of what Caroline said. And then Macy has the nerve to just sit there and not back her sister up. It would be so easy just to be like, Mom, she's right. Mom, I do feel that way. Mom, this. No, nothing. Just sits there and is silent. And that's how she is the entire time. I don't understand why she was ever with her boyfriend. Maybe for the first few months after her dad died, she just wanted something. I understand maybe she was in this weird state. She just wanted him to fix everything. But at this point, now that she's with Wes, I don't understand why she ever second guesses anything. I don't understand why she stays at the library after she's broken up with Jason. And she has has a separate job. She has a different job where she's making money and she could work more hours if she wasn't at the library. She hates it. I don't know why she feels like she has any responsibility she has to keep any commitment that she's made to Jason who thinks the commitment of their relationship isn't worth sticking to because he's gone away to camp because he has to concentrate on his grades the next year. I mean, as it is, it sounds like they're study buddies, not girlfriend, boyfriend. I just, I really don't understand Macy's hesitation there. I don't understand what's holding her back. I, it's frustrating to see her be held back even after she realizes that Jason's an asshole and that she's so much happier doing the catering and that she's miserable at the library. It's the whole book is like that. There's some good characters and there's some good dialogue and I love Wes. I love the way he makes things. I love his explanations for things. I think he's a great character. Macy, like when Wes ran by that day, he told her he's gonna run by the house and Macy didn't come outside and meet him. When her mom punished her because she was at the hospital when Delia was having her baby and she didn't make it to whatever event that she wanted her at. I was so mad and I needed, I would never sit there and take that even if I was gonna get punished more, I would speak up and stand up for myself no matter what was happening because her mom was so wrong to do any of that. She doesn't have the right to tell her not to be with these people for no reason at all. And Macy just sits there and takes it and goes up to her room and follows these rules for weeks, weeks, even though she's miserable, even though her mom and her haven't communicated in so long, all they have to do is Speak. It's really not that hard to speak and she she's already she knows she has to she, she said she's gonna do it and then she doesn't So that's how I felt throughout this whole entire book and I've talked to a few people about Sarah Dustin every book the character has a major flaw like this and I don't know I, I just oh, I was just so frustrated and then we finally got the Wes Macy thing and then we didn't get to see any of it. I just wanted to see them be cutesy for like a few pages But we don't and oh and this cover not a fan of the bracelet on the cover. And then just the title, The Truth About Forever. Just, I don't know, it's not my favorite. For me, even the story, I felt like it went pretty slow. I Maybe I'm used to now all these dystopians and these crazy action paranormal books, but those are so much more exciting and so much more interesting. I've read contemporary books that I 
absolutely adore. I Stephanie Perkins books, I love them through and through. I think there's no boring parts. I think they're always funny. I think all the characters are fantastic. This it took a long time for me to get a feel for the characters. And it took a long time for things to start happening. She doesn't start the catering job for, I don't know, at least I feel like 100 pages. I think Christy was a fantastic character. I really liked her. I also really liked Monica. I love the scene in the supermarket when they run into Wes. It's Caroline and Macy. And Caroline is looking through all of Wes's pieces and she's just analyzing them pretentiously like the art major she is. Wes and Macy are just standing there laughing like, oh, yeah, mm, yeah. I don't even know why I found that so funny, but I remember reading it and dying laughing. Yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't think I'm gonna be picking up another contemporary, another Sarah Dessen anytime soon, but I'm glad I read it. I have a kind of a feel for Sarah Dessen. I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna read Sarah Dessen again because obviously different books are different. Let me know your thoughts. If you had to recommend a different Sarah Dessen book, which one would you recommend me reading? Which one has the least annoying narrator? I, I, I would pick up that one. I guess that's it for today. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.